Coming up in the news tonight, a freak weather system causing some damage in West Grand Bahama. A system implemented to facilitate inter-island travel. And residents on the island of Bimini faring well during this two-week lockdown. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, a freak weather system overnight, dumping heavy rain throughout Grand Bahama. Strong winds and thunderstorms associated with the system, causing some damage in the Western District. This coming as the island prepares for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, which is less than one week away. Italia Hall has the story. Videos and pictures reaching our newsroom show some flooding in the West Grand Bahama community, as well as down power lines, trees, and fences following a weather system that passed through the island on Monday night. Administrator for West Grand Bahama Christian Palacios says a small area was affected in Deadman's Reef Section F and adds that there were reports of tornadic activity. Um, we checked the area. We got a report this morning. Um, probably this happened around 12, shortly after 12, um, last night, this morning. And um, what we found out was basically the damage is up to three houses, two are occupied. So one is unoccupied. There's a lot of flooding in the road. Um, we have the power lines down. Um, the GB power is actually. Um, so the truck's going down and going back in out and trying to see what the situation is with that. She shares the experience of one resident. Um, residents, one resident, um, she didn't receive any damages, but she, she said that um, she could have felt the, like all of the air just sucked out of her house and her house started to shake. So it was a tornado. And with the start of the Atlantic hurricane season just days away, she says residents are getting prepared. But as far as preparation are concerned, the uh, West Grand Bahama Disaster Consultative Committee, we have been meeting. We each have already done our inspections to the shelters. Um, we um, have some training later for this week, which is Friday. So working very closely with the churches who offer their buildings to be inspected. Uh, to ensure that um, the persons who are assisting in the shelter have the necessary training. And that's what we're doing Friday. We're doing shelter managers training with persons who actually live in the West. So these persons would be the ones finding the, the shelters during the storm. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. ZNS News team spoke with the officer in charge of the Freeport Met Office, Siobhan Moxie Bonamy, who confirmed that there were some tornadic activity in that community. And as for the way forward, she says weather conditions are expected to improve. The system itself is progressing toward the north northeast. Most of the heavy showers have moved off and is now moving over the Bear East, um, east of East Grand Bahama toward the Abacos. And that motion should continue for the next 24 hours. And we should have gradual improving conditions as we go through the day for Grand Bahama and Bimini areas. And then by tomorrow, most of it should have cleared Abaco and the north, north and east of the island. 
Bahamas Air is preparing for another COVID-19 relief flight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida to New Providence. The flight is scheduled to leave Fort Lauderdale this coming Friday and will only facilitate the return of Bahamian citizens and residents with work permits. Persons wishing to travel must follow established protocols, which can be found on the Bahamas Air website. Tickets are priced at $150 and travelers are reminded that existing Bahamas Air tickets will be accepted and travel Travel dates can be changed without penalty. Visit www.bahamasair.com, click the My Trip icon, or call 1 800 222 4262. Bahamasair also advises that persons wishing to travel from New Providence to Fort Lauderdale can confirm bookings on the outbound flight schedule to leave New Providence on Friday, May 29th at 10 a.m. Both flights are currently available for booking on the Bahamas Air website. Meantime, a system is now in place to facilitate inter-island travel. This system includes a health screening process. Italia Hall has the details. During the Prime Minister's national address, he announced plans for inter-island travel. After completing the travel and consent forms, applicants for the inter-island travel health approval process were advised to select an approved physician for the completion of a risk and physical assessment. Well, the Ministry of Health providing an approved list of physicians this week. Here in Grand Bahama, eight physicians from the public sector are on that list. Dr. Teatra Dorset Johnson, Dr. Don Gallagher, Dr. Alice Henwino, Dr. Maxine Gonzalez, Dr. Dennis Quijano, Dr. Karis Thompson Major, Dr. Fareed Yunus, and Dr. Zonical Newton. Now, some have questioned why aren't there any private physicians approved for Grand Bahama like New Providence on that list? Well, Dr. Frank Bartlett, the head of the Grand Bahama COVID-19 Task Force, says one private physician has been approved and there is an application process. The physicians have to apply for us to be approved by the Ministry of Health, and so we would have just been in receipt of the application form the latter part of last week. So it's anticipated that more you know, physicians will be applying and be available um, for the travel exercise. He adds that more information will be shared with doctors on Grand Bahama. Now a complete listing and more information can be found on the www.covid19.gov.bs website or www.bahamas.gov.bs-health, which will be updated periodically. If you are a frequent inter-island flyer, please indicate the same in the comment section of the travel application form. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. Meantime, over in Bimini, it's one down and another week to go. The island was placed on a two-week lockdown after health officials became concerned about the number of COVID-19 cases on that island. With 13 cases on record, including one death, officials hope this lockdown could stop the spread of the deadly virus. Jamila Mizik has an update now on the ongoing lockdown. The island of Bimini eyeing the end of its two-week lockdown. The lockdown is expected to end on May 30th. Bimini resident Pastor Therese Roll says the first week of the lockdown went well. She says this is a prayerful time for Biminites. We, we see the Lord had his plan as he began that locking on that first night. It was a shower of blessing that came down. And at the end of that first week, we ended out with that same shower of blessing. So everybody was confined in our homes, just enjoying what the Lord is doing. And as I speak from a pastor, we know that um, the word, the ways of a man are ordered by the Lord. And so we take this time of lockdown as a shut-in with the Lord. And as we look upon our community, as we make contact by telephone and by, by, by way of Zoom room, everybody seems to be content. Pastor Roll says the community is also doing their part to ensure that everyone is well taken care of. Natural leaders are doing their part, administrator, uh, MP, everybody has their has the, the natural part in place. They're delivering food, milk, everything that we need to our dogs, get carrying out water as the call will come. And so we can see the natural need is taken care of. And I can say as a pastor, as I speak for all the pastors, the spiritual need is taken care of. And so I can say there's no lack in God, in God, and even is what he's doing in Germany, he's proven that he's taking care of us. And I believe he brought us to a standstill that we can see that he is God. 
And so we consider this as a blessing for Bimini. Island Administrator Cleo Lopinder says, Dr. Pamela Mills has organized a number of activities for the entire family that should make the two-week lockdown period a lot easier. Persons, you know, running into difficulties. I know we had bad weather for the last four days. It's been raining nonstop. And so a number of persons would have called to indicate that either their roof is leaking or, you know, they need to check their store because their roof was compromised. And even our clinic roof, um, we, we discovered that, you know, some areas um, were compromised because of the bad weather that we were having. And so they were asking for permission to allow someone to go on and either put the top on or, you know, or do some kind of repairs to it. And so we've been working closely with the police and the police has been giving them permission uh, on a case by case basis to go and, you know, fix the roof or put some top on to secure it. Mm -hmm. And so I, people feel that um, they're not restricted. And so they, they realize that they can, you know, um, do things if an emergency occurs. And so I think they're comfortable. And as a special treat, she says Charlie's Bakery is donating 200 loaves of bread to seniors on the island. And we're going to be serving that with some jam that was made right here by another local um, business, BID, or Bimini Innovations Distribution Depot. And so what we did, um, just to make sure that everybody at least benefit from some of the homemade bread, is tomorrow we're purchasing 100 loaves from Charlie's Bread and also 100 loaves from Nate's Bakery. And so... Uh, we're just trying to make sure that they're not um, at a disadvantage because they're locked in. They still they still have access to items that you know that they need. Uh, we've been getting a lot of requests for eggs and bread, but you know our pantry is really a survival pantry. We really don't have um, perishable items. But when they make a request, we try to get it for them. Jamila Mizik, Sadness Network News. Hello Bahamas, I want to encourage you from the book of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters, and God said. We see here in Genesis chapter 1 that the earth, the whole world, was in a state of darkness. It was it was without form, it didn't have an identity, uh, it, it was in dark, it was void, it was in a state of confusion, and in the midst of that state of confusion, the Bible says, God spoke, and when God spoke, we see that that which was dark and confused begin to come into order, that which was in chaos begin to come into life, because any time we allow God to speak, that which is dark becomes brightened. I know that we've been so busy with our jobs. We've been so busy with our careers. We had even been so busy with church that we did not have time to allow God to speak. So even in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of this lockdown, whilst we're in our homes, this is the time to allow God to speak to us from his word. And the Bible declares that every time he spoke, even when you look at Genesis 1 and 20, three and 24 he says and let and god said let the waters bring forth there are some things that when god speaks it will come to fruition in your life there are some hidden gifts there is some anointing there are some skills there is some new path that when god speaks, life happens because the bible declares in him was life and that life was the light of men and that light shine in darkness this is a good time to allow the word of god to speak into your life because when God speak something happens let him talk in this time God bless you and have a wonderful day